I've had a handful of requests for the character Constantine. And frankly, I was putting it off for a bit because he's a little complicated and it depends on what you use as the source of truth. But that request just kept coming in, so it's about time I pulled the trigger. Because this is D&D Builds, where we have an outlet to make all sorts of ridiculous Dungeons and Dragons characters and stop driving the people in our lives insane with them. I mentioned there's a couple sources of truth when it comes to who Constantine is. Whether you're trying to rely on the comic books or the TV show or Legends of Tomorrow or the slightly less accurate but still pretty solid source, for the Constantine movie starring Keanu Reeves. All of them have their own merits, but we're gonna try and stick with the history of the character in the comics while still being influenced by everything. The original character of Constantine is actually very notably British and regularly deals with the conflicts between demons and angels. But in doing so, he's gotta be pretty good at a lot of spell casting. But we're getting a little ahead of ourselves First things first, we gotta pick a race. So of course we're gonna choose Human Variant. When you choose Human Variant, you get to choose one skill, but we'll save that for just a second, and you get a feat right at first level. And we know we're gonna need to do some casting. So let's boost that up early with the feat, Warcaster. When you choose this feat, you get advantage on constitution saving throws to maintain concentration on spells. You can perform somatic components of spells even when you have weapons or a shield in both of your hands. And when a hostile creature provokes an opportunity attack from you, you can use your reaction to cast a spell against that creature as an opportunity attack. Then when it comes to a background, the original character of Constantine is very British and was apparently influenced by the singer Sting, which is part of why the original character's backstory involves him being part of a British punk band. So we're going to take the background entertainer. This gives us skill proficiencies in acrobatics and performance, as well as tool proficiencies with a disguise kit and one musical instrument. Then when it comes to some stats, we are going to be going a little less physical, but not by too much. We're going to take our strength, dump it down to 8, then take our dexterity, boost it to 14 so that way you don't get hit quite as much because most of John Constantine's abilities revolve around being a bit more defensive and dexterity is definitely gonna help with that and you're definitely gonna need that extra dexterity because your constitution, we're only gonna bring up to 12. The original character is a hardcore smoker and alcoholic, so that doesn't usually lead to a lot of great health. Then we're gonna take our intelligence and boost it up to 14. Constantine is able to really dive into the books and find the spells and research he's looking for. And intelligence is one way to help with that. Then we're gonna take our wisdom, bring it to a baseline of 10 so it's somewhat respectable, and then finally, our charisma, we're going to put the rest of our points into. Bringing it to 14 because he is a bit of a smooth talker and has to make deals with devils and angels and all sorts of stuff, so we're going to need the charisma to back that up. Then we have two points left over that we can allocate thanks to being a human variant. So we're going to go ahead and boost up our intelligence and our charisma each by one point. Now it's time to choose a starting class. And a little spoiler here, we're definitely going to be doing a multi-class. And considering that Constantine is constantly battling against demons and celestials, I was really tempted to go with something like a paladin. But if you want to be a paladin and you want any chance of multi-classing, you're going to need some strength. And I don't see John Constantine as being particularly strong. So unfortunately, we kind of have to ditch that idea because you would be required to have a 13 in strength just to be able to multi-class out of paladin. So because we have to constantly make deals and smooth talk demons or celestials or whatever we're interacting with, and that does involve a lot of deals, we're going to start with Warlock. When you choose Warlock at first level, you get proficiency with light armor and simple weapons, as well as saving throws, wisdom, and charisma, and you get to choose two skills. So we're going to choose Arcana, because that's all about researching and figuring out the spells and magic. Then we're also going to take Deception, because you're going to have to be deceiving some demons and angels and whatever else. That leaves us with one additional skill that we get to choose from being a human variant. So we're also going to take Persuasion, just for being a little better at making deals. Then at first level of Warlock, we get to choose an otherworldly patron, otherwise known as a subclass. And it really comes down to two main choices. Although I'm sure an argument could be made for a great old one, I think this would more rely on either a celestial for the angel side or a fiend for the demonic side. And considering that Constantine has more defensive abilities, I think that the fiend is going to be a better choice here. Because when you choose to have the fiend as your patron, you get the feature Dark One's Blessing. So when you reduce a creature to zero hit points, 
you gain temporary hit points equal to your charisma modifier plus your warlock level. And you can think of this as some sort of magical shield that you're building up. Additionally, at first level of warlock, you do get some magic, and we were going to need plenty of casting throughout this build, but we'll dive into all the spells that you get a little later. Then at second level of warlock, you get some eldritch invocations, and these are going to be some great ways to help specialize your overall character but we'll save those for a little later as well. Then at third level of Warlock, you get a Pact Boon, and Constantine deals with a ton of magical item, but he definitely has access to a lot of more magical weaponry. So I want the additional flexibility, considering how much casting we're gonna have to do, to be able to use some weapons and grab Pact of the Blade. This allows you to create a magical weapon, and we can just say this is any of the random artifacts that John Constantine picks up. Then instead of jumping right into fourth level, we're actually gonna do a multi class. Constantine does plenty of studying and that's gonna definitely lean into wizard. When you take a first level of wizard, you get some additional spell casting and arcane recovery. So you can regain some spell slots on a short rest just in case you weren't getting enough from being a warlock. Then at second level of wizard, you get arcane tradition, otherwise known as a subclass. And I keep mentioning that Constantine's really heavily about defensive magic and the most defensive wizard that we can be that still feels true to character is going to be an abjuration wizard. When you choose the school of abjuration, you get abjuration savant. So you can copy some abjuration spells into your spellbook a bit more cheaply and quickly. Additionally, when you choose this subclass, you get arcane ward, and this is even more defensive ability. So when you cast any abjuration spell of first level or higher, you can simultaneously use a strand of the spell's magic to create a magical ward on yourself. The ward has hit points equal to twice your wizard level plus your intelligence modifier. Whenever you take damage, the ward takes the damage instead. And if that damage reduces that ward to zero hit points, you just take the remaining damage. But you can recharge the amount of hit points that ward has by casting additional abjuration spells, and that ward regains the number of hit points equal to twice the level of the spell. Then I was gonna kinda jump back and forth between Warlock and Wizard, but frankly, I want some high level spells, and the best way to do that is by just powering through wizard. So we're going to take the rest of the levels in wizard, and that's actually really straightforward. You only really get features from your subclass, unless you were to hit levels 18 and above in just this class, but that's not going to happen because we already took a multi-class. So with 17 levels in wizard, we have four ability score improvements to play around with. We're going to take the first one and boost up both our charisma and our intelligence each by one point. So that way they're both 16 and they're a bit more usable. Then since we have so much wizard spellcasting, we're going to throw the next two ability score improvements into intelligence, maxing that out, and throw our last one into charisma. Then when it comes to the features that you get from being an abjuration wizard, at sixth level of wizard, you get projected ward. So now you can use that defensive arcane ward that you have and use it to help people around you as long as they're within 30 feet of you, using your reaction to put your arcane ward in front of some damage that an ally might take. Then, at 10th level of wizard, you get improved abjuration. So when you cast an abjuration spell that requires you to make an ability check as part of casting the spell, such as with counterspell and to spell magic, you can add your proficiency bonus to that ability check. And that's why abjuration wizards are some of the best counterspellers in the game. Then at 14th level of wizard, you can have some really solid defense against other people's spells with spell resistance. So you have advantage on saving throws against spells and you have resistance to damage from spells. And all all of that's going to be super useful considering how low your health is going to be. Now, before we dive into too many of the spells, let's take care of those Eldritch invocations that you get from being a Warlock. Since we only took three levels in Warlock, we only have two invocations to play around with, but we're going to take two of the best ones for our particular build. Since we wanted that flexibility with different types of weapons and we have the Pact of the Blade, we're going to grab the invocation Improved Pact Weapon. So now when you summon your Pact Weapon, it automatically has a plus one bonus to the attack and damage rolls, unless you happen to be summoning an already magical weapon that has that bonus, and you have some additional weapons that you can summon, because before it had to be a melee weapon, but now it can be a short bow, long bow, light crossbow, or heavy crossbow. And especially when we look at the Keanu Reeves movie, we see him using what is essentially an angelic shotgun, so having a heavy crossbow that is part of your Pact of the Blade seems pretty fitting. Then the other invocation we're gonna grab is frankly kind of the bread and butter of being a warlock and that's Agonizing Blast. This allows us to add our charisma modifier whenever we cast the cantrip Eldritch Blast. And you can add that charisma modifier to every single blast that comes out from using that cantrip. So with that in mind, let's jump into those spells. 
The first cantrip we're obviously going to grab is Eldritch Blast. Once you hit 17th level of an overall build, this actually shoots out four beams of magical force. Each one of those beams does 1d10 force damage, but because we have Agonizing Blast, you can add a plus four to that with our current build. If you really wanted to focus on this a bit more, you could always swap your intelligence and charisma points, but I kind of like our current build as is. Then when it comes to our other spells, we need a full range of stuff. We're only gonna focus on the ones that seem a little more important to Constantine, as going through all of the spells would take way too much time. And if you want the full spell list, feel free to check out my Patreon, where I have the character sheet for all of my builds. As far as the other cantrips we're gonna grab, we need to make sure that our packed weapon is a bit more useful in certain situations. So we're gonna grab Booming Blade and green flame blade and since you're a basic human we also want to make sure we grab light because you usually can't see in the dark making sure we stay defensive first level spells we're going to grab absorb elements feather fall mage armor protection from good and evil shield and the infamous silvery barbs we can't avoid grabbing counter spell and dispel magic and you want to make sure you have some extra mobility with fly if you're going to be dealing with demons a lot you might want to grab summon lesser demon but be careful because this spell is particularly dangerous as the demons can also attack you but it's going to be pretty helpful if you also grab the spell banishment that way you can kick out any of the demons or angels that you're dealing with sending them back where they came from but at a higher level if you really want to get risky you can grab summon greater demon and then you'll still want some other spells with dealing with the other side like contact other plane which takes 11 minutes to cast and can last for one minute which you can think of as those scenes in the Count Reeves movie when he sits in the chair and sticks his feet in water and winds up in that other plane. But getting even more into the demonic summoning stuff, you can also grab the spell Infernal Calling, allowing you to summon a devil from the Nine Hells. But you can even go beyond that with something like Summon Fiend, leaving you without too many ways to summon any angels, but usually it's a bit easier to summon the demons in the Constantine universe anyways. So I guess it kind of fits with the build. That leaves you with plenty of spells for flexibility, so I'm gonna leave it there, because Constantine is kind of a staple part of DC Comics, which means he's got tons of spells, so I'm gonna try and balance it out a bit in the character sheet, but I think we highlighted most of the really important ones. Let me know what you think about this build in the comments down below, especially if there's anything you do differently, or if there's any spells that you really feel like he needs to have. If you want access to the character sheet for this build or any of my other builds, feel free to check out my Patreon linked in the description down below, just like all of these incredibly awesome people, or the especially awesome OK Guggle, although I definitely think they were trying to trip up some listening computers and have me pronounce that a different way, which I'm not gonna do. Andrew Nobles, Alex, Isabel Walker, Melinda's Robinson, Carcat Kitsune, Z13, Bad in Person, Caleb Brown, Yaksha Senpai, The Dino 21, Kilon, and Benjamin. Then going above and beyond all of that is my Dungeon Master level patrons that I actually play D&D with, which I stream over on Twitch, but I post the VODs for it here on YouTube. Cyber Society, Talon Starkey, Daniel Galvin, Michael, Eric Wade, Salvador, Gamestake, Tristan Bennett, Devin Happy, Kilo Kilo, and Heyo. And then finally, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button, and I'll be here hoping you roll at least three nat 20s in your next D&D session, especially if you want to either play as the Keanu Reeves version, or the slightly more accurate British ex-punk rocker version of Constantine from DC Comics in Dungeons & Dragons.